Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. In today's video, we'll be diving into a high yield section on the biobiochem portion of the MCAT. We will be exploring the fascinating world of the skeletal system, an essential component of human anatomy. As you prepare for the MCAT, understanding the skeletal system's intricacies will be crucial. So let's get started. Let's begin with splitting up the skeleton into the axial and appendicular skeleton. The human skeleton is divided into these two different parts. The axial skeleton comprises the skull, vertebral column, rib cage, and hyoid bone. In contrast, the appendicular skeleton inclu includes the bones of the limbs, pectoral girdle, and pelvis. Now let's look at the difference between compact and spongy bones. Bones are primarily made up of compact and spongy bone. Compact bone is providing the strength and density, while spongy bone, also known as cancanaleous bone, features a lattice-like structure of bony spiracles and trabiculae, spicules called trabiculae. The cavities within spongy bone are filled with bone marrow. Bone marrow comes in two types, red and yellow. Red bone marrow is filled with hematopoietic stem cells, while yellow bone marrow primarily contains fat. Now let's dive into the structure of long bones. Long bones have shafts called diaphyses, which flare to form, which form the metaphys and terminate in epiphyses. Epiphyses contain the epiphyseal growth plane. This is what actually allows the long bone to get longer. This is where the bone is growing. Next up, I want to talk about the perosteum. This is a connective tissue surrounding the bone. Ligaments attach bones to other bones and tendons connect bones to muscles. Finally, we have the bone matrix. The MCAT loves testing you on the bone matrix. We have osteons, which are the chief structural unit of compact bone. They consist of a concentric bone layers called lamellae, which are surrounded by a long hollow passage known as the Haverstanian canals. Between rings are lacunae, which contain osteocytes. The lacunae are all connected through little tunnels called caniculi. Next, let's go over how bones remodel themselves. There are two different types of cells you need to know with bone remodeling. The first are osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are building bone, B for B, while osteoclasts are resorbing bone, or to help you remember it, osteoclasts clear bone. To help with this, the parathyroid hormone increases reabsorption of bone and blood calcium levels. Vitamin D also increases blood resorption and blood calcium levels. Calcitonin, on the other hand, increases bone formation and decreases blood calcium levels. Finally, just want to talk about where cartilage comes from. Cartilage is a firm and elastic structure with a matrix composed of chondrin. Chondrin is secreted by chondranocytes, which are avascular and not innervated by the nervous system. I also want to talk about joints a little bit more. Joints can be immovable, which means that they are fused together to form sutures, or movable, which are strengthened by ligaments and contain, and contain a synovial capsule. This image is an example of a movable joint. Synovial fluid secreted by synovium helps lubricate the joints and prevents it from just being bone grinding on bone. There you have it. We've covered the essential aspects of the skeletal system, including axial and appendicular skeletons, bone structure, bone marrow, etc. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video on the skeletal system, and I will see you next time.